So today's video is about one of the most influential trumpet players who ever lived, the legendary, timeless and genius Dizzy Gillespie. Born in 1917 in South Carolina, his full name being John Burks Gillespie, his father was a musician and little John picked up the trumpet at the age of 12. Starting from the mid-1930s, Dizzy became active as a professional trumpet player with swing-era big bands. He was only 18 years old at the time. This was also when he first got the nickname Dizzy for his playful joking and pranking around attitude. He was a funny guy. He then joined the Cab Calloway Orchestra, where Calloway famously called his avant-garde style of soloing Chinese music. He was fired by Calloway after what other members of the band called an actual fight, physical fight between them. In 1943, he played with the Earl Hines Big Band. That's where he first met Charlie Parker, with whom he later on changed music. There are no recordings of that band from that era, but it is said that the first signs of bebop, the flatted fifths and all those bop sounds were already there at the time with that band and those amazing musicians. So the swing era was coming to its end and big bands were dismantling all over. Musicians started playing smaller venues with smaller ensembles and after the sets they stayed for jam sessions that allowed them to experiment and showcase their talent, their virtuosity and artistically experiment with time, harmony and faster tempos. This was the emergence of bebop. It happened in 52nd Street in New York City and Dizzy was there to lead it together with Charlie Parker. It was a more complex form of music, less suited for dancing than swing music but more focused on artistic expression. Dizzy and Charlie Parker were the leading figures of this now movement of exploring young musicians. He and Parker were both great innovators and masters of this music and of their instruments as well, but if Charlie Parker was the genius, the prophet and the visionary of bebop, Dizzy was its architect, its mentor and its enabler. When young musicians heard Dizzy and Parker play, they all wanted to learn this new style and Dizzy was the one to sit next to the piano and show them the ropes generously teaching them all about it and many of them looked up to him and admired him for that. Miles Davis actually said that Dizzy was the one who told him to go and study the piano and that that changed the course of Miles' path as a creative musician. Bebop is considered the beginning of modern jazz, introducing complex harmonies, faster tempos and intricate improvisation. It emphasized individual virtuosity and creativity, shifting the focus from ensemble playing to solo expression. While Parker was acknowledged as a genius, he was also known for his unpredictability and he struggled with heroin addiction. In contrast, Dizzy was more of a showman, often seen dancing and singing with a huge smile while performing. These qualities, among others, made him a household name and helped popularize bebop among millions of Americans and others all over the world. So here is Dizzy live on this TV show, where we can see his character really shining up and also obviously his trumpet playing skills. There's a place for humor in this man your umbrella and then go on the way. Thank you. And look who comes over for a visit.
This is beautiful for so many reasons, it's just amazing, but you can really hear the difference, the way they phrase the lines. Dizzy's phrasing and Louis' phrasing really represent two different eras in music. That's the difference between phrasing in the swing era and the bebop era, represented by the two best iconic examples you can wish for. Plus, you're getting the best show ever from two top-tier performers entertaining us, but also happen to be musical geniuses. That's an impressive combination right there. As far as trumpet playing goes, nobody played our instrument the way Dizzy played it, with almost unparalleled virtuosity for that era, but also mixing that with incredible intelligence and knowledge, blending technical mastery with groundbreaking innovation and musical insight. And on top of all that, Dizzy had a keen sense for publicity. His distinctive trademarks were his bent trumpet, which was a brilliant feature, and of course the way his cheeks were all blown out while playing. So here is Dizzy recounting the origin story of the bent horn in his own words. We were having a party for my wife. We were at a party for my wife. I left my horn on a stand. I pushed the other guy and he fell backwards and this on the horn he bent. And it just bent. When I got back, it was sticking up like this. At first I thought of killing somebody. <laughs> But I played it that night like that, and it's weird. You could hear immediately. You know, bam, you hear it. That's yeah. The, yeah the bell yeah, is up that. here, you know? I said, oh, look at him. I played it, and I liked the sound from that angle. So uh, I had one made like that. Now the puffy cheeks are a different story. From what I understand, it's natural pockets or sacs that some people have around their neck area. Just a part of their natural physiology. It's called laryngocele. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And when you blow air with resistance, then these pockets inflate. Is that the correct term? And with Dizzy's trumpet playing, it possibly gotten more extensive over the years. So this is definitely just something natural that became a branding feature. Okay. From 1947 on, Dizzy went back to big band music, starting his own band, playing bebop compositions arranged for big band, also incorporating sounds from around the world, mainly involving Afro-Cuban and Latin influences and musicians. Dizzy spent the rest of his incredible career traveling the world, a real ambassador of the positive power music can have on us all, on all humanity. So as I mentioned before, he was a joker, a really funny guy, it looks like it was a lot of fun being around him. In 1964, Dizzy ran for U.S. president. If elected, he promised to appoint Miles as CIA director and Louis Armstrong as secretary of agriculture. But he was serious about the message he wanted to deliver, a message of peace and harmony and of the universality of humanity. His global career went on, forming the UN Orchestra in the late 1980s, featuring his amazing protege Arturo Sandoval, another trumpet hero. Pure entertainer, a super trumpet player, and a musical genius, a giant of jazz, and an innovator that helped change music forever. That is Dizzy Gillespie. So a few weeks ago I've made a video about my own top 10 best trumpet players of all time that you can check out right here. And obviously I got a lot of people calling me out for my choices and explaining how they would have chosen differently. And that's really okay guys, it's still allowed to have your own choices. But among the trumpet legends that people were mentioning and that I did not mention in my list were some real iconic trumpet heroes that really should receive their due recognition. So this video pays homage to Dizzy and more trumpet legend mini features are coming up in the future. So go ahead, like and subscribe to help this channel grow and let me know what you think in the comment section. And that's it, see you next time.